Hey guys, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to create this dispersion effect inside of Blender. And this is going to be part of a playlist that I'm creating called Photoshop Effects Done in Blender. Because there's been a lot of cool effects done inside of Photoshop, but it's not available to everyone and it costs a lot of money. So I'm figuring out ways how to recreate those effects inside of Blender, which anyone can do for free. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is set up our scene and uh, the original image I'll be using is this hologram picture I made inside of Blender and I'll put the link to that image in the uh, description below. So what we're going to do is delete this cube and this lamp and I'm going to press N to bring up this tab here go down to background images and open up that image of the hologram we had. Okay. And now I'll go to top view and press Control alt 0 to snap the camera to view. And now you can see that our image is in the background of our camera. And what we're going to do is cut out this hologram part from the rest of the scene. And to do that, we're going to use a mask. So I'll press Shift A and add a curve path. And we're going to model this mask by hand. It's very simple to do. All you have to do is just align these points wherever you want to keep your image. But we have to make sure that over here in the Curve Info tab, we have to switch the shape from 3D to 2D. Okay, so now you can just go along and trace out the shape you want for whatever image you have. And you can be as detailed as you want or you can just make some big lines to get the basic shape. The more detail you add, the better the result will be, but from far away it's not going to look that different because most of it's going to be blurred out in the end. So I'm just going to pause this and finish it and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see I finished the image and I've gone around and traced everything. And now at the end, I'm just going to select both of these vertices and press F to connect them. And now you see that we have a solid image here, or a solid plane. And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to duplicate it and move it to the bottom layer, just so we have a backup. And then I'm going to set this resolution all the way to 1. So that way, when we convert it to a mesh by pressing Alt-C, and you tab in edit mode, you can see that there's not that many vertices compared to what there would be if we left it at 12. So this is uh, exactly what our monkey w would be right here. And I'm just going to add a new material, Shadeless, and go over to image or the texture panel and switch, to, switch it to image or movie. And then I'm just going to open up that hologram picture and set the coordinates to UV, tab and edit mode, select everything, and press U, project from view. So now this monkey is perfectly mapped onto our plane right here, and you might be able to, okay, you won't. Um, if you go into rendered view, you can see that the image is right on our plane here. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, get rid of this um, background image. I'm just going to uncheck it. And I'm going to duplicate this monkey and move it to layer 2. And then I'll go to layer 2. And what we want to do now is stretch out this monkey on the left side. So I'll tab into edit mode and select one of these vertices here. And enable proportional editing by pressing O. And now I'll just press G and X and move it along the X axis. And I'll scroll up so that more of it moves with it. And you can, the whole point of this is just to create some random stretches. So I think that's good. So we'll leave it like that. Then I'm going to select the first and third layer and add a plane. Then I'll tab into edit mode, press W, merge at center, and move it up here. And I'm just going to press O to get rid of proportional editing. And what we're going to do here is create a mask for our monkey that we'll be using later. So I'm just dragging or extruding points along a curve right here. 
And once I get out of the view of the camera, I'm just going to quickly go around like this and then connect those two points by pressing F. And select everything and press F to fill the face. And so that's on our third layer here. I'm just going to press Ctrl 2 to smooth it out. I'll give it a shadeless white material. And now we have to set up our render layers. So we're going to have three different render layers. First one we'll call the original. original. Second one will be called stretch. And the third one will be called our mask. And in the mask we're going to have the third layer. Stretch will be the second layer. And original will be the first. And I'm going to make sure that the background color is black. And I'll just select all three layers. And now we're going to create a new scene. And this is going to be another a mask that we'll be using to create the dispersion effect. So I'll just add a camera, press Ctrl Alt 0, and open up that background image again. And we'll be creating two planes. So first one I'm going to do, um, I'll press W, merge at center. Um, we're basically going to do the same thing we did with the mask just extrude points along and we want to get most of the left side of the image and then we're going to go out here past the ear and then come back and fill everything again and I'll just duplicate this move it to the second layer and go there I'm just going to scale this along the x-axis some more and move it over to the left like that I'll just press origin to geometry for both of those planes. And I'll go to the third layer, and here we're going to add a cube. And we're going to give it an emission material, but we have to go to cycles render first. And I'll open up the node editor. And so I'll switch it to emission shader. And the color we're going to be using is from a color ramp. So go to Converter Color Ramp. And this black color, we're going to bring it up to a dark gray like that. And then I'll add an Object Info node and connect the random output into the factor. And now we can just close this. So if you go into Rendered View by pressing Shift Z and duplicate this, you can see that each new cube is a different color on the color ramp. And I'm just going to select all the cubes and press Ctrl G to make a group, name it cubes. And then we'll go to the first layer, select our plane, and give it an particle system. Switch the end frame to 1, uh, set the emitter geometry normal to 0, and then set the uh, render from halo to group and select the group we just made. And I just select pick random so we get some more randomness. Set the random size to 1. And I'll bring up the size of these cubes to 0.1. I'll uncheck emitter so that way this plane doesn't render. And then I'll go to rotation and change the random both of those to 1 and the phase to 1. And then I'll just go over to the second layer, select the plane, add a particle system, and select the one we just made. So it has the same thing. And just right now you can see that the rotation is all messed up. And to fix that, just move the number down one and then move it back up. And for this we're going to scene, we're going to create two render layers also. First one will be original mask. And the second one will be stretch mask. And the stretch mask is going to be the second layer. Original mask will be first layer. Okay, I'll just select both layers and render them out. And then we'll go back to our original scene and render everything out also. Now we can jump over to the compositor and see our effect begin to take place after we start to do some work. So I'll just press Control, Shift, and left click to bring up the viewer node. 
and I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times. Okay, so we need to have our original mask, so I'll switch over to the other scene and then have original mask. We're going to have our mask from our original scene. Then I'll have the stretch and the or, uh, I'll go to the other scene and give it the stretch mask. And that's it for all of the render layers. Now to combine our images. I'll press Shift 8 and then add a mix node, combine it with the original mask render layer and set the um, the factor or not the factor, the type to multiply and I'll add a filter blur node set it to fast Gaussian relative y and 2.5 okay now I'll just duplicate that blur node plug in the mask into it duplicate the multiply node plug in the blurred mask and the original monkey hologram picture and then duplicate the multiply node again switch it to add and plug in the two pictures together and now you start to see our effect beginning to take place and to get a smoother transition you could increase the blur like that to 5 I'm just going to keep it at 2.5 because I think that looks good enough and then I'll just duplicate this multiply and blur node down here and plug in the stretched image and the stretched mass. Okay, and I'll duplicate this add node here and plug them together and you can see our dispersion effect. But right now there's way too much um, pieces here and so to get rid of some of that I'll just add a distort scale node We'll view that and I'll bring it up by 2. And when you scale it up, it moves over. So we'll have to add a translate node too. So I'll just add that and then move it along the X to about there. And I will duplicate the multiply node and plug in that image too and plug this into the blur. So then when we check our final image, you can see that there's a lot less particles here. And if you think that's too much, you can just scale this up again and move it across. I'll set it to 5 and then move it there. And that should be better. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Just plug in the last node into the composite node and render out everything. And there you have it, a dispersion effect done entirely in Blender. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please share your results in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave a comment as well. And if you have any suggestions for something you've seen done in Photoshop that you want to know how to do in Blender, leave a comment as well. Thanks for watching.